Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Lao with Kenchan Crafts, and today I wanted to share with you guys my whole fountain pen collection. It is my birthday month, and it's a little past the first year of my you know, beginning here as a YouTuber, sharing content with you guys. And then I also recently reached a thousand subscribers, so thank you, thank you so much, all of you guys, for just subscribing and watching my videos. It's just, I'm just like over the moon with how exciting it is to finally reach a thousand subscribers and it's just it's been a lot of work life happens and then but i do feel like i have tried my best to at least upload three to four videos a month uh and i know that uh, as a viewer that if you look forward to it that i want to make sure that i have fun content for you guys to look forward to so all right without further ado let's get into my pens. I'm going to start with pen brands from America, move to Europe, and then to Taiwan, and then finally we'll end in Japan. So I'll go by brand. So if you, there's a certain brand that you want to go just look at for pens specifically, I will have timestamps for you guys. Okay, so we're going to do a bird's eye view <laughs> of all of my pens, and we're going to start off with the American brand pens. So let's start off with the Retro 51 that I just got recently at a gold spot. This one is the Retro 51 Tornado and it, it, most Retro 51s are roller balls but some of them are fountain pens and this one in particular is a fountain pen and this is called the Silver Lining I got this in medium nib. It is, it was a mystery dip, so the nib size was kind of not up to me, but I really like the cracked ice design and it's got that nice ombre effect of the gray, white, and black. It's a really an interesting, nice pen. And if I were to collect Retro 51, the next one that I want is the autumn one or the B one. <laughs> I think those two are just so cute. So here's Retro 51. The next pen in my collection is from Edison Pen Co. And so this one is, this is called Lake Effect. Just look at how gorgeous that is. Like I, there it is, yep. It's got sparkles in there. It's lovely, beautiful. I think it's like blue silver sparkle. And then the base color is a blue teal with white and silver. This is Atlas Stationer's exclusive with Edison Pen Co. and they only had 150 of these. <laughs> Atlas debuted this like six days before their Black Friday sale and I knew this was not going to be available that long. People are gonna buy it and sure enough it did. <laughs> so I did not get the Black Friday sale on this but I was able to still uh, use a discount code on it. Uh, not as much as a Black Friday but I am happy with it. This is so beautiful. And I got this in a fine nib. It does, Edison Penco does use Yovo nib. And so it's it's a basic number six Yovo with the Edison logo on there. And it's, again, like I said, it's a fine nib. And I have my favorite ink in here, Tokyo Bay Blue, which is a very, very lovely teal ink with blue shimmers. So I just am so happy with it because the shimmer ink works so well with this feed in pen or pen, uh, nib yeah it's just amazing okay and then the next one here is my Esterbrook SD this is my one and only Esterbrook pen and so I decided that I'm going to try out Esterbrook because I love Leonardo so much and I feel like Esterbrook and Leonardo are quite similar in terms of aesthetics and just vibe of the pen. This pen has really interesting chatoyance uh, in the cranked ice design. The rose gold red part is not as bright as I want it to be, but I'm okay with that. This this pen is so interesting. It's got spring-loaded cap, so whenever I <laughs> go to unscrew the cap, I have to like remember and you need to push it in a bit and keep it there while you're twisting it or it's not going to close. <laughs> It's a really lovely pen. I got this in a an elastic extra fine, and I really, really like that fine tip. And the next American brand is the Conklin Durograph 
turquoise knights. So this one is one of my very first <laughs> American brand actually. And I just thought that the turquoise body was so, so cool looking. And the black cap was very uh, a very nice, contrast to this whole the whole look of this pen but this pen doesn't really post so well uh, therefore i do write it unposted and i like the contrasting black i do prefer pens to be a little more like you know if it's a cracked ice design i like it to be all over this style doesn't mean it's cheaper but uh, i do believe that when you make it all black resin <laughs> for parts that you are skimping out on part of the expense of the materials. Hence, it is cost-wise cheaper, but quality-wise, I don't, you know, it, it isn't cheaper that way. So I have this in a stub nib, and it's got that cute little crescent moon breather hole, and that is a trademark to Conklin's design. This pen is a lovely writer. The only thing that I don't like about it, but it's just a very small thing, but like, when I uncap it and cap it, I can still smell the iron or metal uh, smell, or it kind of smells like something's on fire. <laughs> so it's an interesting thing for turquoise water for a pen. And then the last American brand, now I'm not sure if this is really considered an American brand, but I'm going to call it that because this is an exclusive fountain pen model from Fountain Pen Revolution, which is uh, stationed here in the US. And this is the Tanoshi fountain pen model, but this is the Irushi version of their Tanoshi model. And so I got this for like 15% off during their sale. And they usually have sales from time to time, especially during the New Year's, you'll see this um, pen go on sale. And it's a beautiful body, really. If you like black on a cap, I mean, this one only comes with black cap with the barrel having some Arushi Maki art here. Mine is the Silver Dragon. I just think it's so cool. Yeah. It's got lots of sparkles. <laughs> and then I did get a an ultra flex nib, so it's supposed to be very flexible, but it is a steel nib, so it's not as flexible as you, a like a vintage flex would be and so i i don't know i haven't really been doing well with this flex nib yet but i'm sure that it is pretty good for a steel one all right now that we're done with the american brands let's move over and we're going to fly over to europe but before we go to europe i'm just going to talk about this one this is my lovely kilk celestial fountain pen so kilk is based off Turkey. Most of their pens are made with stainless, not stainless, um, sterling silver. And so you can see the band here around the barrel as well as the clip here is all sterling silver. Therefore, the cost of this pen is really up there for a steel nib. Most of Kilk's steel nibs are like 390. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But this is an exclusive from Endless Pens with Christine on Instagram. She helped develop this pen and her idea was just so beautiful. It's like, we are all under the same moon in the same fountain pen community and we see the same moon whenever we write. And I just, you know, it's, it's so beautiful. I just think that the thought process behind creating this pen was just so unique. It was just so brilliant. The barrel of this body is done by Mackenzie Pen works it is diamond cast and it's got lots of like little diamond flecks and sparkles throughout the resin is supposed to resemble clouds and stars and then here it's got the full moon finial <laughs> it's so so lovely like this a regular kilt doesn't have all these lovely little extra bits of details but christine really went above and beyond with her design of this pen and i love it and then the uh, barrel band here has 925 which is sterling silver and then it's got the phases of the moon and then a, a full moon here showing my limited edition number which is seven out, 17 out of 42 <laughs> and I love Kilk so much because like it's it's a lovely weighty big pen it the the screwing mechanism here is so so smooth it's ultra smooth 
and then the feed and nib is also amazing. I don't think this is a Yovo. It's probably a Bach nib. And it writes so beautifully. And then they have their kilt brand on there. I got a medium nib. And you guys will see this in my currently inked video with a beautiful, beautiful ink inside of it. So the thing about this that I love is that the nine, the sterling silver will always match up with the clip, or you can make the limited edition number match up with the clip. <laughs> it's so nice. But whenever you write, the limited edition number is facing with the nib. So that's what you will be seeing. I tried to change it to 925 because you can try to do that by unscrewing the barrel from the grip section, but it always lands here. So, but I'm okay with that. See, so 925 again. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful pen. Let me know down in the comments if you also ordered the Kilk Luna. Oh, I forgot to say it. This is the Kilk Luna. And yeah, let me know if you got it and what number you are and what you love about it because I love everything about it. <laughs> All right, now we're going to talk about Bennu. Now, these are my only two Bennus. And so Bennu is originally from Russia. So their company is from Russia. But during the issues with Russia, they moved everything over to Armenia. And so it was a really big move on their part and you know just amazing for them to be doing that to you know showing that they're not supporting what's going on in russia so i love that about them i do have only two pens from them mainly because <laughs> they're very sparkly bright and it's hard to pick one that i know what i would really like for me though, I am a turquoise teal kind of person. This is a very, very soft, like a snow colored covered field <laughs> and with the sun glistening on it. I absolutely love that um, imagery. And so this gives me those vibes and I, it just, oh my gosh, really enjoy writing with this lovely Bennu Edelweiss. Um, yeah, so this is the Edelweiss of the Talisman model, and it's just the most, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. If this was on a Leonardo, <laughs> you bet it's going to be in my collection. But I do have pens very similar to this design anyways in the Leonardo. And then this is the Bennu Euphoria. This is the larger pen, as you saw. It's it's a honker of a pen. It's much bigger than the Talisman. And I would say that the Talisman is a, a usual pen size. And like I can write with this unposted just fine. It is very, quite long. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the light just makes this resin be so, so beautiful and pop out. So this is the Euphoria Sunday by the Pool. This is Eric Gama's exclusive collaboration with Endless Pens. And I have this in a medium nib. It is absolutely beautiful. A beautiful, beautiful pen. If you have not bought this already, it's still available at Endless Pens. And I believe you can use some of their codes for like 20, 15 to 20% off from this pen. And to me, this definitely looks like a blue ice cream sundae that you can have by the pool or it also can be like glaciers ice snow perfect for the winter so <laughs> it's a multi-seasonal pen and i like it these two are lovely now i don't write with these often mainly because the nibs are <laughs> very broad and very thick so i tend to like my nibs a bit like no more than a medium usually for daily writing. These nibs are very juicy, very smooth, and very broad. So this is a medium and this is a broad nib and they both write on the broad side. So I tend to put shimmers in these inks, just uh, in these pens just because they're so blingy and colorful and bright. And they do handle shimmers really well. So I will give Bennu that. Bennu is really good in terms of flow handling shimmer inks and they are very broad nibs so if you like broad nibs bad news are great for that i think i do need a fine or extra fine so that i can write with these more often okay next up we'll move over to um germany so let's look at my german pens 
All right, so here's all of my Lamy's. <laughs> I first started with Lamy in my collection. I'm just going to add this right here. And so I bought the Lamy Tourmaline. This is the Lamy All Star Tourmaline. And my friend Tiffany recommended the Lamy <laughs> pen line to me. And I really like uh, that you can change the nibs on the Lamy. It was, you know, like I thought that most fountain pens could do that. And yeah, a, a lot of them do, but some don't. Um, and not quite as easily as the Lamy ones. But because of that, the Lamy nibs are very tiny in comparison to most of the nibs and pens that I like to use now. And when I first started with Lamy, I ended up deciding I want all the limited edition colors. <laughs> so there you have it. I bought the white silver, the cosmic, the blue green, and then my friend sold her um, Lamy Lux rose gold to me. Yeah. This was a time where I wanted to collect these. And these are very affordable and they're very good writers as well. But of course the nibs and Lamy nibs, the same can be said for a lot of other um, brands as well, like Kaveco Mediums, Kaveco Fines, or Lamy Mediums and Lamy Fines. They, they can be almost the same or even two mediums can be very different. <laughs> so I have experienced that with all my Lamy nibs. Um, but, like, I'm okay with that because I I don't mind the, the variance and the differences in nib sizes because it's fun to experiment with different nib sizes. But if I wanted a very, very specific nib line width, I tend to use my Japanese <laughs> pens. So, those were all my Lamy um, All-Star, and I prefer a weightier pen, so I never bought any Safaris because I feel like they are the same. Uh, just different bodies. So there's that. Uh, if you are a Lamy Safari lover and user and collector, <laughs> um, let me know down in the comments if you prefer that or the All Star if you use both. And then I also got the Lamy 2000. And then I got this Lamy 2000 on President's Day last or of this year. And I mean, this pen is hyped up a lot, and I just decided, you know what, let me see what it's what the hype is all about. <laughs> and I did get this on a lovely um, President's Day sale. I would never buy this at two thirty two or its retail value. It isn't flashy or a very pretty pen to where I would invest that much money in. So basically my investment is in the gold nib for this pen. And I guess the sleek body is kind of nice too sometimes. So this pen is definitely worth the value that I got it for. And it is a very lovely pen. I got this in a fine nib and it's got a hooded nib here. And um, the grip section is slippery for me. So I do need to post this and hold it further back. <laughs> so the Lamy 2000 is a, it's a very nice pen when you want to just write notes in black ink I, and I put black ink in here <laughs> it, it is it's it does its job so well yeah it's a very smooth writer and then the last one here I bought this sometime last year and this is the Lamy Joy in black and silver and it's only the Lamy Joy's only come with a 1.1 stub and the stub from Lamy is so nice they're very thin so if you like a thin stub, Lamy's have nice thin stubs. And it is a consistent writer. I like the look of this. It's got like a vintage-y look to it, but it's also like a paintbrush style pen. It's so interesting. Yeah, if you don't have a Lamy Joy, it'll be a very interesting, fun pen to just have in your collection, but they are very long. <laughs> this one does not need to be posted and it is a light pen. Now let's then move on to Kaveco, which is the next German brand that I have. And I only have these two from Kaveco. So my very first Kaveco Sport is the Iridescent Pearl. Just look at the iridescence of that. <laughs> and like this is a full plastic that does feel like plastic. It's injection molded, but they were able to create this very iridescent look to it, which is so cool. 
I think this iridescent pearl definitely revolutionized <laughs> Kaweco because most of their Kaweco sports are just solid colors. Uh, I love this a lot. I have this in a medium nib. I have them both in medium and I bought my Kavecos during my medium <laughs> era where I write with mediums and I liked the smoothness of the mediums. They don't write too broadly, at, at least with the inks that I have used. So I like that. And then the next one here is the Iguana Blue. I had to have this one. The moment I saw it, I was like, I am going to collect that one. <laughs> and I definitely would collect like the Iris, the Ruby Red. I love how bright and vibrant those colors are. And <laughs> if I wasn't collecting Leonardo's or other Italian brands, I would be collecting Caveco All Sports. But I just, I don't know, I, I just don't find the value of a pocket pen to be the price that it's at normally for these All Sports to be collecting them. So I opted out of collecting them and I'm okay with just these two because they are lovely writers, but they're pocket pens. Like I don't typically write with them unless I take them out and I need a pen that is small and can you know, go anywhere with me. And I would then take the regular sport because it's made of plastic and I'm okay with it being shoved around in my bag if I don't have a protector for it. I'm not gonna talk about my gin house because I don't really use them. <laughs> I am a sailor all the way kind of person, so I'll talk about sailors in a bit. The last German brand is in here. This is my lovely pen case. It is, it looks extremely exquisite, but like it's, it's, it's probably not real wood or real leather, <laughs> but I love it. And I'm okay with that because it, it, it just looks so well and it functions as I need it to. So look at these lovely, beautiful pens, but we're going to just focus on these three Pelicans over here. This is my Pelican M1000 and I got this <laughs> definitely an impulse buy because it was on sale and it's a great sale price and 1000s is Pelican's flagship pen but it's not the most user-friendly or daily friendly kind of pen uh, but it's definitely like an art piece kind of pen and so I kind of bought that bought this for that reason I wanted to create Rodden and Makie Arushi out of this black model, this blank canvas. So that's why I chose black rather than like the green stripes, which is the most well-known Pelican M1000 or any Pelican Suveron. So I, <laughs> the Makie, Rodden and Arushi art process is going to take a while. And the, the, you know, just the wait list is also very long. So I, We'll have this pen for quite a while before that even happens, but when it does, I'm this is gonna be one of the most beautiful pen I have in my collection. But for now, it's pretty black and simple, which is not what I typically go for. And just look at that honking nib. It's so big, it's the size of my thumb. <laughs> Almost the size of my thumb. It's huge, and this is like a number eight nib. It is one of the biggest nibs and it's super soft and flexible so you can create lots of line variations and i have an extra fine and even in an extra fine i get like medium to double uh, medium to broad lines and you, no, you don't really get an extra fine line with this unless you write super super soft so that's the m1000 and i'm happy to have that in my collection and i'm going to be using it this month so it's going to be fun then the pelican pen that made me want to start collecting pelicans was this one. This is the black tortoise shell. And in this box, when light hits it, it just sparkles and gives me so much joy. But you know, you can see it here too, how when I turn it around, the light bounces off of it. And it is a beauty to look at. The pelicans, they're all internal piston fillers and they're the best internal piston fill I've ever had of them you know of the ones i own so i appreciate that so much this pen is super super light and it's super small but because i have small hands it kind of looks 
regular. <laughs> if you have bigger hands, this is a tiny pen. And so I post it. And but even with the post, it's still kind of long. Or it's still kind of light. It's about 17, 16 grams total. So it's a relatively long pen once posted. And so for how light it is, and it's slightly back weighted because the body of the pen is so darn light. <laughs> so um, that's the one thing I really dislike about the M600s, but they're so cute and pretty. <laughs> and therefore I got another M600. This is the M600 Glauco Kanban. Oh my gosh, look at how the light reflects on that barrel. And the barrel is kind of like a holographic effect. But if you look closer, it does have some striated designs, like a regular striped uh, pelican. But it's got the holographic colors. It's orange, mostly orange. And then you got some reds, some greens, and then a little bit of yellow and a very small amount of blue. I really, really wished that there was more green and a little bit more blue. I did ask for that, but I don't think they could really do that with this pen. The barrel is different for every single one of them. So this M600 is unique that it is much heavier because the internal piston is actually made of, I think, brass. It's the same material as the M800 and M1000s. That's why those are weightier. This one has a lot more weight to it, which is very nice. So I can write with this unposted because the weight is nicer. And oh, it's just so beautiful to look at. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing the blue now. Yeah, the blue is right here, so right by my hand. I love it. And the yellow, orange definitely really pop up together. This is such a gorgeous, gorgeous pelican. So I'll do a uh, deeper in-depth review of this pen and you guys will see it much better in that video. Okay, so I think that's all my German brands. So let's move on to the Italian brands. So we're going to be moving to Italy. Someday I want to also travel to Italy and uh, you know, just shout out, out to you, Katie. I know that you went to Italy before. I'm just so happy for you that you got to go there. And I'm hoping to go there one of these days in the next couple of years. <laughs> All right. So Italy, we're going to start with Paniter. So Paniter, this is my Paniter Arco in Desert Beetle. And I, you know, for how expensive this pen is, I was expecting the Chateauians to be prettier. It is absolutely gorgeous. Don't get me wrong about that. Um, but I was expecting a lot more shine and shimmer. But this pen does have some very, like, translucent, bland green stripes here. Like, there's no Chateauians in there. It's just a little bit see-through. So you can see the inside of this pen and how much ink is in there on these translucent green stripes. And it's next to, then, the silver Arcos as well as the Chateauant green Arcos. So this is a very interesting body design, and for an MSRP of $900, it's, personally, I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> or like, that that's just, it's overpriced. It is a beautiful pen. I love a lot of the embellishments on it. I don't like the black end piece here. It just, I think it detracts from the whole silver green. Um, I also don't like that it's a very light pen, and if I post it, it's super back weighted. It's so uncomfortable to write with because this cap is heavier than the body. And it is magnet closure. So if you like super light pens, this one will be a pen for you. Otherwise, if you like to post, this is not a pen for you. All right. Um, unless if you have big hands, but even with big hands, like, yes, the weight's going to rest on your hand better, but it's very light at the front. So I will be selling this one. This is the uh, Paniter Arco Desert Beetle. It's a beautiful, beautiful pen, just not ergonomically for me. And the aesthetic is just slightly not what I uh, would have preferred. But I do love the green. I love the silver. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful pen. Next up, let's look at my Aurora pen. This is my one and only Aurora. This is the um, Aurora 88, the Volterra. 
and it is this lovely, lovely cream with some light brown and like white, but then the chatoyant parts are green. And it's almost like mother of pearl. It might be, but yeah, I can see the green and I can see like the rainbow iridescence inside. Like, I'm not sure if my lighting is good enough at the moment here, but it's a beautiful pen and I will review this pen so you guys can see it much, much better and close up because today I'm just giving an overview of all my pens. Uh, it's got rose gold trim. I think that pairs so lovely with the cream uh, and the neutral earth tones of this pen. It is one of the most divine pen in my collection and I will have to say this is one of my favorite Italian pens. I I love my Leonardo's, don't get me wrong, and they're beautiful and colorful, but the Aurora nib is very outstanding. <laughs> it beats all my Leonardo nibs. This is a 18 karat gold, so I also will have to preface that I have a biased <laughs> view of Aurora because I only know how the 18 karat writes. So I don't know how the 14 karat nib writes. It might not write as nice and smooth as the 18 karat. So if you want to venture into Aurora, 18 karat gold nib is dynamite. And the pen is dynamite too. <laughs> then next, let's move to Visconti because I have three pens from Visconti. So the first one is my Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. This Visconti was loved and pre-owned and I got it for about 40% off the retail value. Because it's pre-used, the threads are very, very worn out. So I'm not sure how well it's going to cap and seal itself. So I will most likely need to use this every day when I have it inked. It's not inked at the moment because I used it up, so I cleaned it out. And it's it's a lovely writer. I have this grounded to a CSI, and so I have to use a very light touch to write with a CSI, but it's such a lovely bouncy nib. It's the 23 karat palladium, so that's the older version. And I absolutely adore this 23 karat palladium nib. It is super soft. It is the relic of the past, like I say, and I love collecting that type of stuff. This. Homo sapiens is everything I I wanted it for. It definitely, you know, met my expectations. The only thing that I don't like about the Visconti Homo sapiens is the Homo sapiens has gone through a lot of changes. And you can see here on the clip here that it is just like laser printed on there rather than engraved. And I just feel like that is it's Visconti kind of cheaped out on that um, to cut back on costs, I suppose. But at the time, palladium was cheaper than gold, and so Visconti did use palladium to create their nibs. And so I thought that, you know, um, an engraving would have been lovely for such an expensive, like, timeless piece of pen. Like, why would you not engrave it? So this. Visconti logo there is very cheap to me <laughs> um, for how beautiful this pen is it should have been engraved and then because it's not engraved like here it's it's very subtle but like the s there on the Visconti is not completely um, perfect like it's I don't know like they it, it was a little too thick <laughs> and so the s isn't um the perfect kind of S. And, but these are just two small little gripes that I have about the Visconti pen. The more like functional issues this Visconti has is that it doesn't have an ink window. And so you don't know when you'll run out of ink. I think that I'm okay with that drawback. And a lot of people are too, because it's, it's a sleek looking pen without an ink window. So to solve the problem for that, <laughs> Visconti came out with the Crystal Dream and I just love that name so much. And I do think that this here is partially engraved. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> the Ponte Vecchio bridge clip here is engraved. So I love that so much. I'm glad that they brought that back in. Like this is a newer pen model. So uh, I, 
I may be wrong, but I thought that they had engraved the Visconti before, and then they switched to just laser printed. And the fact that they went back and did uh, engraving on this is just lovely. And so it's got a an ink window here and a second ink window here at the grips uh, section here. So it's I will always know if I have ink because then I can just slosh and turn this and you can see the ink in there, yeah. And the nib is an 18 karat rose gold nib. It's absolutely beautiful. It is a different experience as well. Like Aurora, it has its own feel of writing. I do prefer the 18 karat gold nib over my palladium nib. <laughs> Even though the palladium is what I've always wanted, they do both have very different writing experience. But I like the 18 karat because it's not as soft and smushy feeling. So there's it's more accurate in terms of knowing that you're writing and, and controlling your writing. This is the Visconti Kaleido Unicorn Galaxy, and it is my loud Visconti. It is beautiful. It's got wispy whites and lavenders throughout. You can see a little bit of lavender here. And this is the 14 karat gold nib. It is rhodium trimmed to match this beautiful lagoon turquoise here. This is a beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous Visconti pen. Yeah, Visconti is expensive. I would definitely collect all the Viscontis if they weren't so expensive and if I could get them on sale. Definitely these two were on good sales and you guys all helped me get the Crystal Dream, so thank you again for that. All right, so that is all Visconti. Let's move to then my most well-collected <laughs> Leonardo Officina Italiana. So, well, we'll start here in this with the two Magicos here. This is the uh, the Leonardo Momento Magico, and this is the Muse exclusive. You can see the Muse logo there. I love this pen so much. I love the greens, especially this like tealy forest green here where the logo was etched on here. Love it. Love that detail so much. And this pen has the most lovely set of greens and black, whites, and transparent. So parts of it are transparent, like this part right here is transparent. I wish that it was a little bit, like the transparency was more here, so you can see, because the piston kind of ends right here. If the transparent parts were right here, then I could see the inside of it, but the the pen itself, the Magicos, come with an ink window, so that's not really a problem. And because it's got an ink window, I would have preferred not to have transparent parts, because I don't really like my pens to have transparent parts. I'm okay with like dark translucent colors. Regardless of all that, the chatoyance in this pen is so lovely. And then this is my Leonardo Magico, and this is the Smeraldo or Emerald. I saw I first saw this sometime last year, and I really really wanted to get this one. And it, I have this in a an elastic extra fine, and then this one, the Lions Rock Green here. I have this in a medium nib, and I definitely have been going more finer, uh, like I enjoy finer nibs, as a recent, and so I, this. Elastic Extra Fine is a beautiful writer. I love it so much. The gold hardware here, I think, matches this Smeraldo green, emerald green, really well. And it's showing off very blue in my camera, but it definitely is a teal. It's a very, very, like, green, greeny teal. Yeah. Next up, we're going to move inside, and there you will have it. The rest of my gorgeous Leonardo pens just tucked underneath my amazing pen box here. Let's look at the Leonardo Supernova. This 2023 limited edition Supernova. This is the Bohemian Twilight from Jonathan Brooks. And wow, I love the teals and the dark blue purple in this pen. I wish that it had like a one third ratio of everything. But no, the orange is about 60% of this pen. And then the dark blue and purple and teal is the rest. 
but just look at how vibrant that teal looks. I just love it so much. And uh, this is a rose gold trim. I do feel like the rose gold trim it probably wasn't the best. Maybe like silver or gold even would be better because gold does pop out a little bit more. And I have this in an elastic extra fine, which is one of the most beautiful nibs I've ever used. Definitely would need to write with a drier ink because the Supernovas, the Leonardo Supernovas and Leonardo Gold Nib Pens come with a, oh my gosh, this lighting is so bright. Uh, the Leonardo Supernovas and Gold Nib Leonardos come with a an ebonite feed, and so it makes the ink flow super, super well. If you have a wet flowing ink, it's not going to be the best <laughs> kind of experience. So I tend to use drier inks in these Gold Nibs because they're just so wet. <laughs> they're very wet writers. I'm going to talk about these two first. This is... The, the the purple one here is the one I got from the San Francisco Pen Show. And this is the Jonathan Brooks Purple Limited Edition in rose gold. And it is one of one, so it's the only pen out there <laughs> that was created. So I think it's super, super exclusive, and I love that. Uh, I have this in a fine nib. I It's a medium nib that I grounded to a fine. And then this one is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande uh, Copper Patina, Endless Exclusive. And I just think it's one of the most beautiful pens. As you turn this around, it's the Chatoyans, and the green just kind of pops out amongst the dark blues. It's so beautiful. It's like, it's like the earth as you're looking down from the sky. <laughs> It's so pretty. And I have this grounded to a Naginata nib. This is a steel nib. This one over here is a gold nib. So the grandes can be in steel or gold. And this, the gold ones are so expensive. So <laughs> I have this in a steel nib and it writes so magnificently. And being in a Naginata nib, it's even more special. And the line variations in a Naginata nib, it's just so fabulous. So. A beautiful looking pen with a beautiful grind by CY. This is a unique pen and I love it so much. My favorite Grande model is this one. This is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande, Mother of Pearl, which is the Jonathan Brooks resin. And the resin, this resin is, you know, like the Mother of Pearl, um, so kind of like rotten. And it's got chatoyant purples, iridescent pearly white, and it's got lots and lots of beautiful green as well as black. So all that together is just such a great combination of a pen. So I absolutely adore this and it's got rose gold trims. It's so, so beautiful. <laughs> and I have this in a stub nib and that nib is just gorgeous and it's huge. It's got the older style of the Grande, which has a ring here at the tip, at the grip section. I know some people might not like that. I love it. And I just love, I love a lot of uh, hardware on my pen. <laughs> the cap band here has two extra little rings and then it's got another ring here on the uh, barrel. I think it just looks gorgeous together and then one at the end here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pen. I do wish that it had more swirls, more greens um, mixed in. Uh, it's a little bit more blocky of a pattern but I think it looks so unique. So I love it. So now let's move on to all of my regular Memento Zeros. And it's just these five. So as you can see, uh, the Leonardo Memento Zeros are smaller than the Grande. And they are also very comfortable. So if you like lighter pens, the Memento Zeros will have to be the ones that you go for. So let's talk about my first and favorite Leonardo Memento Zero, obviously, because it's teal and it's that gold hardware. It's everything perfect for me. The teals are chatoyant. They're a little translucent, just a little bit. Like mine weren't as translucent as most people's were from other pictures I've seen. And I love when a teal is contrasted with a white because then it makes it even brighter. And then the gold 
sparkle and chatoyance throughout this pen is just absolutely divine. I don't use it much anymore because I'm trying to give love to my other pens because I bought so many <laughs> recently. But every time I then go back to this pen and look at it, I'm just like, why am I not inking you up? <laughs> but I need to stick through my code of writing with other pens as well and giving them some love. And this one, whether it's inked or uninked, always looks beautiful to me and it is my absolute favorite Leonardo Memento Zero. And then my second favorite is the Gold Spot exclusive, which is, oh wow. Okay, now the lighting is really perfect. This is the Forest de Umbra and I asked for a perfect mixture of browns and greens and they did a great job of this because it is absolutely perfect. And this one comes in ruthenium trims which is black and uh, it's so lovely and stealthy and i got this in or i bought a f an elastic fine to put in here so the elastic fine writes really nice and broad and juicy so i i love that for this pen if you have any of these leonardo pens let me know down in the comments because i want to know who my leonardo pen friends are <laughs> so and i think i know ursula I've seen your unboxing of these two pens, so I know you have these as well. And I think Heidi, you might have this one as well. <laughs> or oh, not Heidi, Kirsten, I'm sorry. I did that again. <laughs> so yeah, this, this is such a lovely pen. And after I showed this, did a review of this pen, uh, quite a few of you guys went to buy this. And I, it just makes me so happy to know that you, my viewers, you guys, I wouldn't say enabled by me, but that is the truth. <laughs> but more so just like, I love that you guys love the same kind of pens I like. And after seeing what I am able to share with you guys, you can see it much better and then make a decision, make a better decision based on that. And so I appreciate knowing that you guys uh, buy pens after talking to me and saying, hey, that what you showed was so cool and I I <laughs> bit the bullet and bought it. <laughs> and then this is the Pen Boutique exclusive. This is the Rangoli. I love primary manipulation and the, I like a primary manipulation when the red, orange, yellow, and like it, it just goes in a rainbow gradient. However, mine is not entirely like that, but it is red, orange, yellow here contrasted with a Gorgeous, gorgeous, deep purple, fuchsia, bright purpley pink here. It's magnificent. This is a lovely, lovely resin. The only thing that kind of detracts from it then is this blue teal here. Like it, it does take away from like the uniformity of this color scheme that I have going on here. But if I don't look at that, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> But other than the, than this little part here, it's not an imperfection at all. It's just that it doesn't go well with the rest of the colors. It is a medium nib and it writes super thick and juicy lines. I love it. But not so thick that I won't write with it. <laughs> all right, so that was going, it, I'm going in order of like my favorites. So, and then the next one here is the Pen Venture exclusive from, that, from Emmy. And this is called Arabian Nights, which is also another Jonathan Brooks resin. And what I love about this so much is like, you can see the chatoyance in this deep blue purple here. And then it's contrasted with this bright, um, like a brown gold. I absolutely love that. And I wish that there was more like swirly designs. This is more like a block of sand and color which is fine too in its own right, but um, I like these kind of swirls. Yeah, I, if if this, oh wow, they look so pretty together. <laughs> if this one, um, if the Arabian Nights was more like the Paris Maldives, this one would have been like second favorite or third favorite. And then the last Memento Zero is my Blue Aloha, and this one is absolutely beautiful. It's got cracked ice, it's got color blocking here, and it's definitely a unique design of Leonardo's that I collect, so I am absolutely happy with this one. And I have this in a medium nib and gold trim. I do like the gold trim, but I feel like if I got this in a silver, I might like it better, even though I know that I won't 
care for silver trimmed as much, but like the silver trim would have looked really good with all this blue. Then the next one is Monte Grappa. This is my Monte Grappa uh, Venetia. This is the America exclusive. This is the dark blue, I think. But I honestly think this looks like sapphire. It's so beautiful. It is made of celluloid. I think this pen posts pretty well, but I don't really like how it posts. I mean, it's fine. It's a little back weighted. So I do like this pen unposted. Just like my Visconti pens, I like them unposted too because they're big <laughs> and they're heavy. Um, and I got this pen from Craig. And if you haven't watched my San Francisco pen video yet, like I got to San Francisco on Friday and the pen show starts Friday. It goes from Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And we, my partner and I, we got to San Francisco and to the hotel about like eight in the morning, uh, 8.30, nine o'clock. And we decided to buy the weekend pass so we can get in right away. And Craig was one of the few people in the, you know, the ball, not the balcony, the, the ballroom area there was not a lot of vendors yet, um, but of the vendors that were there, there was like very few people. And then Craig was talking to a vendor and I was just like, I know this person. And so I went up to Craig and I said, hey, Craig. And he's like, oh, hey there. And he said, oh my gosh, you're the first person to say hi to me. Actually, here, do you want a pen? <laughs> and I was just like, well, if you're offering, sure. And then he just showed me this Monte Grappa. And I was just like, huh. Oh, very cool and I looked at it and I said hmm this this looks very used and quite old and he said no I just bought this <laughs> so I don't think he liked it and that's why he wanted to give it away and so he was just like here you can have this pen <laughs> so I was just so happy that I'm like okay that's a great start to the San Francisco pen show I mean of course oh, it, it was lovely and I think he gave away Emma Blanc as well uh, 149 to somebody else that day. So I, at that time I didn't care for my block, but now I'm just like, hmm, might have been nice to have him a block at least in my collection. And if it was a free one, amazing. But this pen, like I was more into Italian brands anyway. So this, I am very happy with this one. I love it so much. Uh, and it is an 18 karat gold fine nib. So this retails for like 750. I think Craig was like, yeah, here's a $900 pen. <laughs> you can have it or something like that. So, very, very lovely pen. It writes smoothly. It is just a lovely pen. Go check out my Italian pen video. You will, you'll see how lovely it looks. All right. So we are done with Italy, you guys. Now we're going to go over to Taiwan. <laughs> Look at that. Gorgeous set of Taiwanese pens. But before we go into those ones, I'm going to talk about these ones. This is my Opus 88 Blue Sapphire Demonstrator. And you guys have seen me unbox this already. This is such a beautiful, beautiful, long Opus 88 pen. It is chatoyant. It is just beautiful in the light. And I have this in a medium nib, and it's got shimmers in there, and it's doing shimmer justice. So, so happy with this. And I write with shimmers in a medium or fine nib. This one has a shimmer in it does it so well this is also another opus 88 and this is a demonstrator but a pocket pen as well it's so cute it is the end of this exclusive and i just love that little paw teacup there with a grumpy kitty up there oh my gosh this pen is absolutely cuteness overload <laughs> and i have this in a stub nib to handle shimmers again and shimmers the shimmer in here is a ferris wheel press shimmer and i have ptsd trauma with shimmers from <laughs> from ferris wheel press I, I guess mainly because i have a lot of ferris wheel press inks but a lot of them have clogged my pens and it kind of clogged this one too so i had to like press on the uh, the nib a little bit for the particles to flow out of the tine because it was getting stuck in there but other than that I, I love this pen so much. It's so cute. And it shows off the beautiful particle, shimmer particles of the ink. All right. So these are all Twisbees. And I only collect Twisbees 
with rose gold hardware in the eco model i eco models are my favorite i had bought this twisby eco black silver because i bought a broad nib and i bought that broad nib because all of my medium um diamond 580s clogged with shimmer inks and like who wouldn't want to use a shimmer ink in a demonstrator pen that will show off the beautiful shimmers these pens can also write with regular inks that are not shimmers but to me i want to see the beautiful shining shimmering beauty of those shimmer inks if it's going to be a demonstrator pen this is my uh, prussian blue diamond 580 this is the punch pink diamond 580 and i do like writing with both of these uh, but i do prefer my ecos more and then i recently got the indigo bronze and i got this in a fine nib this black one r smoke rose gold is in a stub and the white rose gold is in a medium so this medium is actually very thin so i love that about it the fine is about as thin as the medium and then this one is a stub and i do have a shimmer in here so the stub handles the shimmers really well so stub plus the twisby feed is okay but <laughs> twisby feed plus medium not so much at least from my experience and i'm sure that better shimmers will work well in the twisbies so that's my twisbies they're really lovely inexpensive for a starter pen now let's move to japan my platinum pens oh this is not a platinum pen so i'll talk, <laughs> i'll just talk about this quickly this is a makie pen and I got this from an Etsy shop, and it, it is from Japan, and it's got the beautiful wave, the tsunami wave, that, you know, famous drawing or painting of the tsunami wave, and it's so lovely, and it's got these cute little birds on the cap here. It is a snap cap, and it's a tiny, tiny nib. It only comes with cartridges, so I have to buy cartridges for this, and I, I still have to remember where to get those cartridges, but... It doesn't have a cartridge converter, so this pen is kind of just harder for me to want to write with. So I, I need a cartridge converter <laughs> for my inks. All right. But it's a lovely, beautiful pen. It is a little bit thinner. That's also why I don't use it. All right. Platinum pens. Here's my Pikachu Platinum pen that I got from Gold Spot after I won the, uh, the giveaway on their podcast. And that's a fine nib. And then my Grail Platinum. This was the Grail Platinum at the time, uh, about a year and a half ago. And this is the Platinum Makie Kanazawa in Autumn Leaves. So you guys know my favorite season is Autumn. And this was a no-brainer that it is going to catch my eyes. <laughs> and I love it so much. I have it in a medium nib, and I'm happy that I chose a medium because it's actually... A Japanese medium is very thin, and it's exactly how I like my nib widths, nib sizes to be. The only problem with this pen is that it's super, super thin, and it's quite light, but it's not entirely too light. So I do like the weight of this pen, but it's a little too thin. But it's a beautiful pen. I will never sell this. All right, the next one is my Platinum Century 3776 in laurel green this i just love the gold with the dark forest green here and it's a little bit translucent so it's stealthy very chic looking so nice and again i have this in a medium nib uh, i think platinum mediums are probably my favorites the platinum fine here is actually nice too it's very smooth but i i do like the thickness of this medium but it's still quite fine so if you have a laurel green 773776 as well, <laughs> let me know in the comments because I, it's one of the very few 3776s I have. And there's, I like to collect very rare limited <laughs> 3776s and there's not a lot of good ones out there. But the laurel 3776 is not a limited edition, but I think it's one that a lot of you guys like and I like it too. This next one here is a very rare, unique one. This is the 2021, I think, or no, or the 2022 Kinshu, which is 
supposed to mean like the colors of autumn <laughs> beautiful like obviously i'm gonna buy this one and have this one and so it, this comes in a set of four and i believe this is probably the autumn one and the other ones are the other seasons there's the blue turquoise one called the kumpo and that one is absolutely gorgeous i would have loved to have gotten it but they're so expensive now because they're very rare and the one uh, right before this one is the violet one and that one's gorgeous too these are faceted so the barrel is faceted i i quite like it it's interesting and it's like a reddish orange transparent body with gold trims i just think that looks so beautiful together and colors of autumn this is very fitting. I think the color here is definitely well represented for autumn because the leaves typically are reddish orange. So, <laughs> so happy with this. It just came in, so I haven't inked it up at all. I will do a much closer in-depth video of this for you guys. If you're interested, definitely watch out for that video. Oh, I cannot wait to write with my platinum pens again. I haven't written with them much but I will again soon. So next, let's go to the, pla the pilot pens. Now I know you all love pilot pens, right? I don't know anybody out there who doesn't like pilot pens because they're smooth, they're reliable, they are wet writers, and they're just so nice. Um, now, the only thing about Pilot is that they're not as extravagant looking, and I like my extravagant looking pens, so the only extravagant ones I would say are these two Pilot Vanishing Points, but they're not even that loud either. They're pretty tamed, but they are very classy looking. These two are my favorites. This is, the green one is a the T Taiwan 30th Anniversary Pilot Vanishing Point, and I have that in a medium nib. I chose a medium because I have only I only had fine vanishing point nibs, and so I wanted a medium vanishing point. And then this red one is the Pilot Vanishing Point Pilot 60th Anniversary, and it is the Kanreiki. So these two colors are just absolutely amazing. <laughs> I love their matte designs. This grip section here is matte for the red, and the whole body is matte for the green one. So they're absolutely unique in those merits, or in those regard. Um, the red one, the Kanreki, I have it in a fine nib. It is. It only comes in a medium, but I got this in a fine, and I really love it. I love a Pilot Fine, so when I got this medium, it was much too large for my liking. Uh, but I still will write with drier green inks. Uh, and I have a, a green ink that's slightly dry, but it's also very like an average ink, and I love it so much. So you'll see this color in my currently inked. And then the other two, my Pilot Custom A23s, the smoke and the amber. Amber is a medium and the smoke is a fine. And they're just lovely. If you just need a fine nib to journal or to plan with the pilot custom 823 fine will do that for you it yeah it's just so good it's so smooth i love it so much these two pens are just i love I, I, like i take these out with me well this one <laughs> i take it out with me when i need to fill out paperwork because it's a fine nib it works on regular copy paper really well and I get lots of comments <laughs> just for even for how simple this pen looks. I get comments on it and it's it's a lovely, lovely pen. All right, so that's Pilot. I don't have a lot of Pilots. I want a Pilot Falcon because I, I think I want a Pilot 912 in a Falcon nib or a 943 in a Falcon nib. So I'm thinking of the Verdigree American exclusive, but all the Falcons are sold out and I don't want to have to pay full price at a retail that still has that so that's just my two cents on that let me know down in the comments what your favorite pilot pen is because obviously pilot has a lot of it's very popular <laughs> and a lot of you guys i'm sure have at least one pilot pen 
But uh, of these, I think my favorite would be the Conraki Red and the, I mean, obviously my Pile of the Vanishing Points. I love them so much. They're my two favorites. All right, we're gonna end off with Sailor. Here's my Sailor box and my Sailor roll. <laughs> All right. So this Sailor is the very first Sailor that got me into Sailor. This is the Autumn Moon. Of course, it's another <laughs> fall autumn pen and uh, it's a medium fine. This is part of the four season series, the uh, Shikiori series. And it is a lovely ivory body with, it's what Sailor calls Metashine. You might not be able to see it in this camera, but basically it's a very subtle iridescence. Yeah, I, th I think it's so pretty. And it's, it almost kind of looks like shimmers too, but it doesn't have like sparkles in it or like glitter. It doesn't have glitter flecks in it. It's, it's just its own kind of sparkle. So it's such a lovely, lovely pen. And it's a medium fine, but it like, Procure Slims, I like them at the beginning, but as I continue to build my collection, I find that I like larger grip sections and the Slims just don't cut it for me. But other than that, Procure Slims are so cute and they're very affordable to get into a Sailor Gold nib. You can find these for like under $100 on Amazon, definitely in the black market or the gray market. They're definitely worth the value. I then got these Procure Slim. Most, uh, I got these two Sound of Rain series on Amazon for 140, 150. The retail for this is 360, and getting it for 140 is a steal. This one I got on AliExpress for 160, and this is my very first because I, this one caught my eye the very first time I looked at the Sound of Rain series, and I I impulsively bought this like a year and a half ago for about 240. Yeah, I was like, that's 120 less than retail. I'm okay with that. No, that's that's too much for this pen. You can get this for under 200 easily. So just wait for the Sound of Rain series. Wait for it to go under 200. They're not they're, they're not worth the 360 price tag for sure. But they're super cute and the fact that i had to collect all of them i needed to get them at a good price <laughs> but if you just want one about 200 is a good price so just look at how pretty they all look together right i'm gonna order them in my favorite so the the winter rain comes second because it's a milky body and it kind of changes its color in the light the other two are opaque so the summer rain and the autumn rain are the, these two, and they're a bit more opaque. And then winter rain and summer rain are milky, translucent bodies. And the finials are all different colors. <laughs> I love that so much. And then it's also a matte finished body, and they all have this larger cap band, which is so nice. And they all come with 21 karat gold nib, but the gold nib is the Proger Slim size. However, they do write much smoother than my 14 karat Sailors. So let me know down in the comments which one of these Sailor Sound of Rain series pens you have, which one's your favorite, and if you like them more compared to your 14 karat nibs. I absolutely love these so much. They write so smoothly. They're just too small. <laughs> if I can trade these for Pro Gears, like in another dimension, another world where these exist as pro gears, I would do it in a heartbeat. All right, now here are my pro gears, except for this one. This is a pro gear slim. This is the Moroccan mint tea, sugar, and mint. <laughs> this one is so cute, it's just got so many different like tea themed colors, and I am a tea loving person, so this pen is. A no-brainer to be in my collection. Um, I like using honey in my tea, so we'll just consider the sugar my honey. <laughs> and so this is the this is a very good representation of tea color, green tea, specifically. And then this green here is the mint, and the nib here is 
single toned, but it's champagne gold and it's lovely. And it's a medium nib. This is my only medium Sailor Pro Gear Slim and it writes so beautifully. It is the perfect line width for me. All right, and then we're gonna get to the expensive and these will be the last pens we talk about for this video. So thank you so much, you guys, for sticking with me this long in this video. Remember to subscribe to my video if you like this kind of content and wanna to continue to see more of the videos. So let's talk about my grail pen first. This is the Rodden Finial. This is the Sanctuary Blue from Bunga Box. And it is a lovely green with blue here and the white finials. And so the green represents the turtle, the blue represents the water, the white represents the sand. And I just love every little representation of this pen so much. And I had this grounded to a journal and nib from Gina at Custom Nib Studios. So this pen is absolutely unique and the nib comes with uh, it's engraved with Bunga Box's logo which is an ink bottle <laughs> I love it so much okay and then the next one here is my Kisan which is part of the Moroccan Mint Tea collection I just love that ruby red so much and the fact that it's translucent makes it less like in your face and I just think this one looks so royal <laughs> and it's so beautiful it's just absolutely amazing I love ivory colored pens and so when it it's got a lovely gold red to match with it like this it is perfect I think this one, not a lot of people like this one compared to the, compared to this one, but I think this one was such an eye catcher for me. All right. And then here is my Kubo Zakra, which is the Hachimanjia exclusive, which is a retail store in Japan. So you can only ever get it in Japan. This pen is very, very hard to get unless you have like rabbit, white rabbit shipping which allows you to buy the pen, have it shipped to a Japanese uh, warehouse or address, and then the warehouse will then charge you shipping to get it shipped here to America. So I just skipped all of that and bought this secondhand from Melissa on Instagram for uh, about the same price as it usually would sell for online. And so I'm so happy with it. This has a pink finial, like a transparent pink finial with a milky, soft, pastel pink body. And oh my God, this pen is another grail of mine. It's got a beautiful, beautiful sacra petal there engraved in the nib. So this pen is everything that I love. I love dusty pink inks and dusty pink will go in here <laughs> all the time. And the last one here, and I just wanted to do a little distinction here. I, the last one here is my Yoseka Refresh Sailor Pro Gear. Now I got this secondhand as well for about 40% off the retail. And I am always for that. And this has a milky body too that's a little translucent and it changes its color in depending on your lighting. And when I got this, I was like, oh no, are the finials the same color as my Hachimonjia? They're very similar, but you can see the difference. This one is more pink, and the Yoseka one is more peach. It's got more orange in it, and this one has you know, a little bit more pink in it. So they are different. I don't want to collect so many sailors with the same finials. So this one is just so, so beautiful, and... I will be getting the home pen in the champagne gold so that someday when I find the origin pen, which is yellow gold, all three of the Yoseka pens will have different trends. Ah, oh, this one is so pretty. All right. Okay, guys. So that is all of my fountain pen collection. I want to thank you so, so much for joining me in looking through all of my fountain pen collection. I have so many pens now. Like I just 
feel like I need to start selling some of them that I don't love anymore. Uh, I have sold a few, so thank you, thank you so much. Remember to leave a like. Comment down below what your favorite fountain pen is in your collection or your favorite fountain pen within each <laughs> brand. And yeah, I would love to have a conversation with you guys about your fountain pen collection too. So leave those down in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.